So, I wish you all welcome to the first session of eEstonia. Uh, throughout the day, uh, we are going to hear a lot about uh, Estonian uh, experience on, on building this e-state and e-government. E uh, and these sessions are going to continue through three days, so all together six sessions. And I think uh, that uh, participating on the sessions, you learn a lot about how we did it, what experience we gained, and what we think was important. This session is called Laying the Foundations, so we're going to start right from the beginning. And uh, I need a tool. So, much better. And first, uh, we would like to thank our sponsors. Uh, this uh, session is uh, uh, sponsored by European Region Development Fund. And uh, my name is Erke Arus. Uh, I'm going to moderate this session together with uh, Yuri uh, Mishnikov. And we're going to have uh, five uh, presentations in a row. And it's a good opportunity for me to give a word to Yuri, who's going to give a short word, and then we'll continue. Thank you very much, Erke, and good morning. Yeah, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I would like to say a few words about exactly those foundations which uh, my colleague Eric has mentioned. And I would like to say about those foundations, not in a very literal term, foundations in terms of the infrastructure which Estonia has so successfully built, providing access, but also about the foundation, about how Estonia has become uh, so successful uh, institutionally and internationally. And one of the origins of that has been uh, a sort of joint project with the Estonian government and the United Nations Development Program, which I used to work for. As you can see from my title today, I represent the Leeds University of the United Kingdom. But in the past, there was a project together with the Open Society Institute in, 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 in Hungary, Budapest, when we decided that that was a good idea that Estonia could share its experience in uh, developing information society in general terms. But also, of course, uh, there was specific projects which we were focusing on. And one of them was exactly I think the, the founding element of that, it was uh, the Tiger Leap program, which President uh, uh, of Estonia has mentioned today. It was the beginning, and I am proud to say that one of the supporters of that project in 1996, 1997, was UNDP. At the time, my, my former colleague, Liener Wieck, who was managing that project, and I would uh, like to mention that that particular project in, in support of this initiative of the Ministry of Education won the best project award among UNDP in the whole region in 1997 in the meeting in Istanbul. So there is some history to that. And I think it's very important that uh, uh, we still remember that, particularly for, for the audience, for all the participants, that the issue of access and equal access, inclusiveness, as the President has mentioned, is the key issue. And the, the way that schools were selected to be those uh, uh, key institutions that would not only show the way how access can be done inclusively, but also uh, provide access to local communities on a, on a larger scale. And the, I don't know whether it's part of the, of the document package, but this is the publication which showcases the, the Estonian experience in, in, in uh, this Tiger Leap program which connected all the schools to the internet already in 1999. Uh, Iganus Academy, was at the forefront of spreading that knowledge. And for example, a similar project was implemented in, in Georgia. It was called differently, of course, not Tiger's Leap. But, uh, and then uh, other countries was looking at that, and some elements were implemented in the Western Balkans. So this is something which, again, the demand for this kind of uh, 
international cooperation in providing better access to a population at large and also to specific institutions, be it schools or, or museums or libraries, is the key aspect. And this is something which we're going to discuss at this session. And key fundamental was partnerships, partnerships between the public sector, private sector, private institutions, telecom companies, train institutions, educational, and uh, we would like to ask all the presenters to address those issues in terms of uh, partnership, why particular partnerships were successful, how to balance public and private interest when uh, it's not easy, of course, when you have to focus on your commercial interests, but you have to address public ends. And this is the session which also I would like to ask the audience to, to think uh, in terms of their own country specifics, how they would be looking at the student experience and, and what can be done in terms of uh, repli replicating uh, some of the initiatives or, or some of the projects in their own countries. So that's my initial introduction uh, and uh, I'm wishing uh, a good session and interesting questions and, and, and presenters. And with this, I would like to pass the floor to my uh, fellow moderator, Erke. Thank you very much. So, and to give the framework to this session, I would like to present you a slide that maybe you have seen already before, uh, because it's not my original. Uh, while we're talking about uh, these uh, foundations, then uh, this e-government infrastructure can be defined as something that is uh, built on digitalized information. It means that we have to have uh, the data in a form that uh, can be uh, looked through the computer, work with a computer. Formalized data exchange is also very important as the data is going to be located in various places uh, in the system and uh, to build up a good service. Uh, you need probably data from other systems, uh, not only the systems that you have at your hand. And uh, not less important is the identity. It's very important to be able to identify persons over the uh, computer channels uh, and do it safely and securely. And uh, not less important, uh, the experience you are going to learn uh, during the sessions uh, is uh, the infrastructure as such as we understand it in general. We need, ac we need access. We need access to the networks uh, and not access only in some points, but everybody, any, any time, anywhere, should have that access. And this is something that we're going to talk today. Also, education and knowledge. People have to learn how to use a computer. And it's not that straightforward. If you, if you think about uh, the timeline, then uh, I graduated uh, university some 20 years ago. And when I graduated the university, uh, the last year I saw the first PC. And it wasn't connected to anything else but the power line. So it was like a more modern typewriter or something. So it's, it's a long way uh, to, to something that we call, can call uh, e-government. But already a couple of years later, in 94, I joined one uh, infrastructure company uh, building these uh, telecom networks in Estonia. And uh, guess, the first computer wasn't connected to anything at all as well. So it was a typewriter. But already in 97, there was a good initiative in Tiger Leap. So something changed during these uh, three years. People were already thinking of uh, getting connected and getting everybody online. And this is some change in our mindset that is, uh, we would like to present today. And of course, motivation is not uh, less important. Uh, people are not using the internet or using services because they have to or, or there is no other way. They have to like it. There is, has to be a need for that. And uh, this is something that uh, people have been uh, searching a lot. What are those applications? What, what is that uh, you have to do in the internet in order for people to uh, make use of these applications? And of course, uh, 
private sector is coming uh, very strongly into play as uh, working together with the public sector, uh, they are building those services. And to continue, I would like to present our first speaker today. Uh, he's the man who has committed his life to building uh, infrastructure in Estonia. He has been working in several positions uh, in uh, the telecom uh, market and uh, to Presently, he's holding the position of chairman and, and CEO of, of uh, AC Telecom and, uh, and EMT. Please welcome Valdo Kolm. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Estonia and Tallinn. All of, all of you, of course, we see Estonia as a E and M country, but at the same time, uh, for example, Tallinn is a very old city and take a time for sightseeing in Tallinn because there are still a couple of buildings from uh, 13th century. Then we have Serge uh, Oleviste, what was decades the tallest building in Europe, therefore take a time. And of course we have a lot of nice night club. night clubs there. there is uh, time for, for everybody. But uh, as um, organizers asked me to talk about the infrastructure, not the, the so, so much about the services, then infrastructure is a little bit boring thing, but at the same time, that, that's really basis for, uh, for info society. And um, how we started, then we started quite early, and beco uh, before I, I go to the history, I just uh, would like to describe our structure, who we are today. And uh, Telia Sonera is his biggest uh, operator in North, uh, Northern Europe, owns ST Telecom, former listed company, nowadays 100% owned by Telia Sonera. Telia Sonera is, of, of course, a listed company. And then we have two subsidiaries, EMT, biggest mobile operator, and uh, Elion, uh, biggest broadband operator on the market. Just to describe the situation and who are our competitors, EMT on mobile side owns almost 50% from the market. We have very strong competitors from Scandinavia, Tele2 and Elisa. And uh, we have quite a strong position on broadband market on Elion side above 50%. Then, uh, as an old uh, fixed company, we still have 77% uh, from fixed minutes, and then we are growing quite rapidly on TV market. That's about our position. But how it started? In 1991, uh, Estonian government uh, established company ST Telecom, and already same year, there was a first stage of privatization. It was quite early stage, and uh, Schweiz and Finns came in. At that, that time, there was uh, Telia or Televerket in Sweden and uh, Sonera in Finland, and together with the Estonian government, they established the uh, first mobile company in, in Estonia. We made NMT launch. NMT is uh, analog technology for, for mo mobile systems. And we started to building the network. On 92, uh, the same uh, companies, Telia and Sonera, and the Estonian government established a fixed company, AST Telephone at that time. That was poor fixed business at that time. And of course, we started immediately uh, digitalization of the network. On 95 already, we launched uh, here in Estonia GSM uh, infrastructure. And 96, we already had 1,600 kilometers of fiber optic cables. That means that quite quickly, I would say, during the five years, we built such a um, fiber optic uh, loops in Estonia. We basically covered all the regions, all the cities, and the and, and, uh, biggest, let's say, uh, towns were connected to the, to the fiber. And we had, uh, at that time, almost 
of a million fixed lines. Penetration is not very high, of course, it was 30%, but, but of course we had lower, we had something 20% in, in uh, Soviet time. Therefore, we made quite a quick uh, start-up, and uh, I would say that was also that, uh, such a starting point for, for Info Society, because already in 96 we had quite advanced uh, internet online and dial-up services. We started in 94, but basically on 96, we our daughter company, we had uh, the, the internet service available on a, on, a, on a market. Then already on 96, we covered 80% uh, with NMT technology, uh, whole Estonia, and we had 100,000 uh, clients. And altogether, we made quite a huge investment uh, during these uh, first five years, 150 million euros. That means, of course, that's not only the money, but, but the whole attitude was that uh, built the basis uh, for infrastructure because at the, at the same uh, time there was basically, how to say, internet on a, on a table, let's say so, that, that, and we felt that something is coming. 99, we made the second uh, phase of privatization. And I guess uh, government made very clear decision to go to the uh, stock market. We, we actually uh, listed in, in Tallinn and London. We got uh, also financial investors. That's made us more transparent. We were very open company, and, and I guess that's also part of the culture, to, to be uh, transparent, to be open, and I guess that's also supported uh, for, for such a modern, uh, modern uh, issue as, as uh, um, uh, telecommunication and IT. On 2001, there was the liberalization of fixed telecom market, that means since 2001, all the telco and IT market was, was uh, liberalized. There was totally free market and competition in every market. That went quite well for us, actually. We kept quite well our market shares. And, and already 2001, we got the fifth position in Europe on penetration of ADSL. ADSL is fixed broadband technology. Of course, the penetration at that time was low, if I remember, it was some 6-7% uh, from, from uh, uh, our, our customers or citizens. But, but uh, we also started quite quickly and we built the ADSL nodes, not only in, in two free cities, in, in all the biggest cities, I mean 15 uh, cities in Estonia, in one time. That gave possibility to actually interconnect or connect all the uh, business customers at that time and of, of course advanced private customers who wanted to really use internet or use already such a more advanced uh, uh, e-services. Mobile penetration reached 52. Uh, we launched also uh, on 2001 uh, JPRS that's uh, data technology in, in mobility and on 2001 we established together with two uh, Estonian biggest banks at that time, uh, Sved Bank and SEB owned, owned by, by uh, Schweiz also, we established certification center uh, and I'm not uh, going to tell more about that because there will be separate uh, presentation about that, but that actually uh, great the basic for, for ID card and, and uh, made such a infrastructure for, for uh, all these uh, ID, ID services. Therefore, it's, it's quite an important point here. That means that government actually uh, wasn't involved we established as a private company, then we got support for the, from the government. It's still owned by us, 50% uh, ST Telecom, and then 50% uh, by two, bank, two banks. 
That means that's a very good example uh, of, of public-private uh, cooperation or partnership, but, but still the certification uh, center is owned by private companies and we're selling the service to the government. And at the same t uh, year, we, we together once again, uh, biggest bank uh, in Estonia, Swedbank, and ST Telecom, and then we got uh, uh, many co-founders uh, launched the project Luca World to train people use internet. And uh, once again, that will be separate slides about this project, but I, I call it very important uh, on, on this building of, of uh, info society infrastructure. On 2003, uh, ADSL or fixed broadband coverage reach 90% of territory. Uh, GSM coverage almost 100%. And men mobile penetration reach 80%. On 2005, uh, uh, there was another, let's say, liberalization of the mobile market, mo mobile portability uh, took place here in Estonia. And once again, we succeeded quite well. We, we even ga uh, got uh, new customers as a market leader. And nowadays, of course, number portability is a very common thing, basically in everywhere in Europe. Then we first in Estonia managed to launch 3G services here. We were leader here. Nowadays, uh, we have uh, about 25% of our customers using mobile internet. But yeah, the launch was on 2005. Mobile penetration reads 107%, uh, and uh, ADSL penetration 54. That means that 54 uh, from 100 homes had uh, ADSL or fixed broadband connection on 2005. Uh, then our uh, uh, company, Elion, made the IPTV launch, that's the digital TV, uh, uh, on, on broadband services. And uh, the internet uh, penetration reached uh, 54% uh, on 2005. I guess that's uh, thanks to this Luca Word project, that's uh, thanks to, to, to quite a heavy competition on the market between uh, operators. And 2007, we already launched on, on mobile part, mobile ID. That's very similar. Uh, it is basically has the same features as uh, ID card. And, and you can sign the, sign the contracts. Nowadays, vote. And basically, inside the company, in, in EMT and in our telecom group, there is no papers anymore at all. I, I'm signing all the documents with, with mobile ID every day using that. It takes 30 seconds and it's signed. No problem with that. Therefore, more and more I'm signing uh, all the contracts with suppliers, but also with the government. That's very positive. That means that I, I'm getting the, the letters electronically, signed by minister or, or, or uh, whoever, and sending back, signing also with ID or mobile ID, and it works perfectly. But the launch was in 2007, and 2009, uh, our minister of, of uh, economics, uh, Mr. Parts, mentioned also this uh, project, uh, Estwin, we established together, uh, once again, this time, uh, public, uh, uh, sorry, uh, private cust uh, companies plus government, then we got also foundation from EU, and we established the Estwin to build basically a uh, broadband connection to, to uh, uh, up to 100 megabit to each household by the end of 2015. Now it's ongoing, Estwin is, uh, works well, building the fiber. And, and basically, we handle then the private companies, the, the last mile or access. On 2010, we launched 4G. As our own Atelia Sonara is, is uh, first in the world to launch 4G in Sweden and then Norway, 
then we were tenth in a in a in a world Estonia to launch uh, 4G, and uh, all together for this period we invested six, uh, sorry, nine million euros. That's a huge amount of money, of course. Our country is small, maybe that not not so big money for you, but. None hybrid, sorry, ready. Thank you. <coughs> just, uh, just so that uh, that also our industry needs the investments, and and of course uh, for basis for info society, you you need invest heavily, very heavily, and honestly too. I guess the, 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 our winning position uh, shows that you have to be first on a market with, with new technologies. Uh, and we are quite happy because in Estonian uh, customers, they are, they are using uh, IT, uh, ICT services even more than, than average uh, Europe. That means that expenditure from, from um, GDP is higher here in Estonia for telco service than, than, uh, than in Europe. Where we are today, on 2011, our e-card penetration uh, reached 80%. 80 uh, I guess uh, last news that even 35% using uh, e-cards e uh, digitally, that means basically once a week. Then we had, uh, in the beginning of this year, uh, first in the world mobile uh, ID elections. Everything went well. No problems with that, actually, secured. Of course, uh, there wasn't a huge number of, of voters, but, uh, but still, we, we made, made uh, the, the test and it works. Our free G, or nowadays we call a free point G coverage, reach uh, 99 percent. That means we, we covered basically Estonia with free G services, and mobile penetration reached 120 percent in Estonia. A lot of double SIMs already, because just now we're selling uh, specifically this year a lot of smartphones and tablets. That's uh, definitely the trend. If, if you take uh, from the sales of equipment, then basically 70% are smartphones. And then we package them with, with our SIM card. We buy uh, selling such a bundles. And, and that really shows that uh, there are a lot of de devices uh, with our customers. That means not only the uh, uh, phone, but also the, the tablet or, or PC. And it's, I would say, uh, the trend, definitely, definitely the trend. That, that uh, increase of uh, uh, mobile internet is, is very clear. <clears throat> we reached the penetration on mobile internet, 23% uh, here in Estonia. It, it, it doesn't uh, show very high number, number, but yeah, once again, these are really uh, real users once a week, we call. Otherwise, we have them even, even more. And internet penetration, uh, already mentioned, uh, it's a 76%. That means, once again, people who are using it once, at least once, once a week. We would like to reach 80%. That's uh, such a benchmark for us uh, here because uh, of, of our um, colleagues in, in Sweden and Finland. They have... In, in these countries, uh, around 80% of internet users. I guess that's s some kind of uh, such a uh, maximum to reach because older people, of course, uh, don't use uh, so so often or, or at all. And uh, our ADSL penetration reached uh, 66%. And as a, as a conclusion, I, I would like to mm, say with this infrastructure. Um, to build the info society, you need the, the, the basis for that, and that's, that's basically infrastructure. Otherwise, you can't run the services and applications. And therefore, you, you need to be quite quick, quite aggressive. 
who don't have, uh, for example, from your countries, uh, fixed uh, uh, network, then it's it's excellent possibility you, to use 4G nowadays. That means that uh, wireless solutions, it's, it's quite a good advantage. It's easy, easier to build. The, the technology is there. If you're talking about 4G, then uh, equipment, I mean the, the modems are there also, quite a reasonable for, with a reasonable price. Therefore, it's not a problem anymore uh, to build up uh, quite uh, fast backbone and fast access for, for Info Society, because Info Society is new type of democracy. And here we're talking uh, about uh, digital difference and, and I guess with such info society there is, there is no uh, digital difference between people. Doesn't matter where they live, how old they are. And of course, we are info society, then uh, they, they have the better possibilities to participate on democracy, to be involved. I guess info society for citizens, of course, after the infrastructure, uh, structure, there will be the application and services. I'm not going to uh, talk about it very more, uh, but, but, but we, we really uh, have a lot of very useful services, really easy to use, as, as President talked about this taxation. And, uh, and services will actually run such a more effective uh, model for, for, for government and even for whole country. It's just very effective. We, we are just now started here a new initiative a uh, year ago, uh, Paper Free Estonia. You can imagine how, how, how much we spend on, 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 on paper. Therefore, I guess it it's really uh, drives uh, efficiency. And of course, info society, that's the freedom and new possibilities. Thank you very much. Okay. Sorry for that uh, technical interruption. It wasn't planned, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> and um, uh, now it's time for a couple of quick questions because we, are, we started a little bit late and, and I'm afraid we are not able to finish afterwards. Are there any questions? I give my mic. Uh, thank you for your good uh, presentation. Uh, <clears throat> the, uh, my question is uh, about your investment. You said... Uh, 900 million euro total investment. How did you get those money? Mm -hmm. So from government to a private sector? Yeah. Thank you. 
Um, yeah, as, as uh, there was uh, quite an early uh, uh, stage of privatization, actually two steps, then basically we got this money from investors. No, uh, exactly. No government money at all. At all. That's very clear from the beginning. So how do you get the return? How do you get the return? Is the government guaranteed? Uh, no. Uh, How they get the return from their investment? No, actually, they established uh, a joint venture in 1991, and of course, the, the, uh, f for them, in their first year, the investment wasn't so huge. That means that the risk wasn't so so big, and the, the, uh, the, 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 there wasn't uh, no guarantees at all at that time. They took the risk. Basically, we didn't have e even in 1991 uh, in the beginning of the year uh, we had basically the the Soviet Union still. Therefore, they took the risk. Sorry. So I saw the question over here. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I'm asking about the mobile ID. What was the triggering need for it? And how do you see the achievement so far? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the need is uh, easy to use. Just uh, that was the uh, most important driver. Because if you take ID card as a, as, a, as a card, you have to have reader to put the card to the computer. But with mobile ID, they don't need uh, to have nothing. You're just pushing the pin codes uh, via mobile and it's done. Therefore, easy to use, that was the main driver. And uh, we see very, very good development. As I already mentioned, I'm, I'm using it every day, every day, because it's, it's easy to use. Sometimes, honestly, ID, ID card is also very convenient, but, but sometimes you're forgetting the card to the computer, running to the other room, and, and there is certain, let's say, couple of security risks, not very big, but, but with, with mobile ID, uh, you don't have that. So, uh, I would put it that way, uh, that uh, mobile ID helps where you don't need uh, the ID card reader itself. So you can, uh, in principle, you, you can ha sign documents anywhere where you have a computer just. And how do you see people accepting using your mobile ID? Yeah, we have uh, nowadays uh, 40,000 uh, active users. It's not a big amount, but they are business people, early adopters, I would say, uh, very good customers of, of EMT. <laughs> Therefore, for our, 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 you, you have to drive a little bit uh, customer need. Therefore, they are happy. Both, both, both. Uh, that means that uh, 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 you can use uh, public services in, in uh, Public registers, there is a button for mobile ID. If you go to the web, there is a ID button and mobile ID. Plus, all the banks have the same. That means you can use basically all e-services e via mobile ID nowadays. So, and uh, one last question, and afterwards maybe we have time for discussion and then take the rest at the end. Um, you mentioned that um, uh, usage of uh, ID card is about 30 percentage or 35 percentage, something like that. Yes, electronically. Yeah. Electronically, yeah. But penetration is 80 percentage. Right. So it means that uh, uh, many people are not using this in this manner. Right. W uh, what are you intend to uh, uh, motivate more the people using that, and what is the trend actually now? So what are the uh, uh, what is your forecast when you will reach? Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Uh, that's a separate, uh, I guess, even presentation will be, but uh, I see the, the, the positive trend, definitely, because there are more and more useful services in a web that motivates, definitely. If it's really uh, useful. The second is actually we're running a couple of um, educational uh, programs. For example, this Luca World, uh, Luca World, what we are running together with, with uh, we had together with, uh, with the banks. Then we had also special uh, courses, how to use ID card. And, uh, and uh, third is such a government policy. 
if you're changing your passport, you have to have also ID card with you. That means that I guess there will be the penetration of uh, ID card 100%, and I see that uh, in a, in a coming two years there will be penetration of electronic users 50, 60%. I guess we can address this question also in another presentation. So I would suggest that we move on because it's already almost 12 o'clock. So we thank you. Thank you. Walter. Thank you. So our next speaker has been working a lot in IT and uh, telecom market. Uh, has a long experience in uh, various uh, projects, uh, consulting and uh, pulling things together. And as I learned just uh, lately, he's also writing a book uh, on Estonia. Together with co-authors. Yes. So I wish to welcome uh, Oleg Shraikovsky. So it's forward and it's back, right? Thank you. Eric, have I to be fast? I have to be fast, right? Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, uh, what is essential here is uh, that what Valdo has told about is, uh, is an extremely essential because uh, as history shows, in a countries where the, uh, where the privatization of telecom calls, uh, comes on an early stage, where the countries, if the uh, liberalization of telecom markets come on an early stage, in these countries we see that the building of foundation comes much faster, I mean much faster than in countries where the telecom uh, became state one. And uh, here is one more topic what uh, Waldo have gently touched, uh, is the building of broadband coverage. It's uh, an extremely essential point, and uh, I mean, we all understand that, that we have to be connected to internet in order to, uh, to provide and to uh, reach all the services we are talking about. If you will just see an Estonian picture here, then uh, formally speaking, Estonia is quite a successful country here. Estonia is over there and European uh, average is, uh, is here. Uh, so Estonia is quite a successful country. The level of, uh, of internetization in Estonia is a level where the, how much households are using broadband connections is much higher than average in European Union. Quite essential parameter is that, uh, that more than 97% of households in Estonia have the technical ability to be connected in, in a few days, in a very few days, for quite a low price. And, uh, and all these together shows that we are quite well positioned formally. But uh, it's from one point of view, it's a question of, uh, of enormous number of uh, governmental and public uh, and, uh, and private initiatives what are in place. And from another point of view, essential here is that we are still dealing with the issues permanently, even, even in this situation also. So why we are dealing with that is uh, not only the fact that Estonia is rather uh, trying to, uh, to position themselves compared with the Nordic countries than in European, uh, European level average, but uh, we strongly believe that there is a strong relation between the level of broadband penetration and uh, the growth of GDP. We strongly believe, and there is a lot of evidence for that, that uh, there is a strong relation between the broadband penetration productivity uh, and uh, the growth of GDP per capita. So there is a lot of uh, researches on that done. Uh, if you would like, I, would, I can rather, uh, I would later on provide you with some sources on that. But, uh, but essential here is that, for example, uh, McKinsey argues that that increase of 10 percent of broadband penetration uh, leads to increase of GDP per capita on 1.4 points, and it's quite big number. And essential is that it's uh, much higher than uh, than the corresponding increasing of uh, mobile penetration. So we do believe that that uh, that it increases productivity. It's already it's already um, proved that uh, that the person who is, uh, say, connected, who is using the uh, internet, who has a computer, who is well educated, uh, produces more than 500 uh, United States dollars uh, more GDP per capita per year uh, compared to his non-connected person. And that's the numbers what we are pursuing. So actually it means that if we are talking about the about the uh, 76 persons of populations who is actively using internet, I mean, all over the Estonian populations, actually for us it means a digital divide. Actually for us it means that there are still 
a little bit less than 300,000 persons who is not using internet, and, uh, and this is a quite serious obstacle to build information society. That's why there is a lot of programs like, uh, like Village Road, like, uh, like educational projects, uh, broadband penetration, increasing programs, such kind of things, what is uh, improving the situation. I will talk about some of them. I mean, there was a lot of initiatives, more successful, less successful, but about some of them I just briefly talk. Uh, one is quite interesting series of projects. Actually, it was three, uh, three separate series of projects. The closest translation is Village Road of these projects. And uh, I think that, uh, that the third one was the most successful out of them. Actually, all of three projects has almost the same goal. So we are talking about the last mile. We are talking about the last mile in regions where the uh, penetration of internet, I mean, it's mostly it's rural areas when the penetration is quite low. And, uh, and the government would like to achieve a situation that uh, the uh, price of internet will uh, go down dramatically and the speed and, and other parameters of internet will go, down, uh, will go up uh, dramatically. And uh, the third one, for example, was structured in a way that, um, that uh, Estonia is divided on 15 counties. So for each county, government actually says that, you know, guys, says to telecoms, I would like to achieve here a situation that the internet on this area will cost no more than some quite uh, small amount of money, that uh, the speed of internet will be uh, no less than, for example, one megabit per second. And there was a lot of other parameters. So each operator, if he will put these parameters to his business model, we will see the situation that the, uh, that the, say the business model will, uh, I mean, return investment in this business model will be kind of 10 years, what is actually infinity in, uh, in telecom business because the equipment is go quite old for five years. So it means that there, there is a need for additional money for that. And actually what government do, uh, government asks each telecom, you know, what kind of, uh, of money you will need in order to provide the internet on those conditions. And those telecom who is asking less money from government, those telecom is uh, getting the contract on that. And as a result of that, actually, uh, all together in this uh, QLA3, Village Road 3, government spent 1.3 million euros it's quite a small amount of money, and, uh, and thanks to that, uh, we've got more than 10,000 households disconnected. So if you will just see the number, how much, uh, how much one household connected will cost to government, it's quite low number compared to a lot of other countries. So that was a story about the, I mean, one example of the stories with, with last mile. Another uh, example, what uh, Waldo actually has uh, mentioned also, is a story with Estvin. If Village Road is about last mile, then Estwin is about core network. So the major idea here is that we would like to achieve a situation by year uh, 215 when every single building in Estonia will be connected to uh, at least 100 megabits of internet. So uh, when, uh, when the optics will be in every single village in Estonia, and if you will just put this picture on, on the Estonian uh, reality, Estonia is, as you must know, as, as you may know, Estonia is one of the lowest popul the, uh, po population density countries in Europe. So there is 1.3 million persons living in 45,000 square kilometers. So uh, it's not so easy to achieve this situation here. Actually, in Estonian context, it means that more than 6,000 kilometers of uh, fiber optics has to be built here. And, uh, and that's why the project was established. Actually, uh, there, is a, there is a consortium of uh, eight major telecoms in Estonia, including our company also. And, uh, and the major idea behind that project was that, that this consortium, this partnership of private companies, uh, they, uh, they are owning the core network. They are providing this core network to everybody who would like to use it on transparent prices. And the, uh, and the goal of these operators outside of this consortia is just to build up the last mile. So uh, we do believe that the project will be successful. And the project is financed both by government, by private companies who is uh, inside this project, and some European funds also. There was a lot of other initiatives like, uh, 
like uh, governmental policies, not only governmental, but also the, uh, the public-private partnership on building up the, the free Wi-Fi hotspots, the open internet points uh, in libraries, in villages, in, uh, in offices of postage services and such kind of things. And as a result of that, actually, in Estonia, there is more than uh, 1,000. I mean, to be exactly, yesterday I've just uh, seen the picture that it's uh, 1,134 free Wi-Fi points in Estonia. So actually, it means that, that not to have uh, the free Wi-Fi, for example, in bar, it's, uh, it's competitive disadvantage. So uh, it will mean for, uh, for customers of these bars that they will rather not come to the, to the point. So that's briefly about the building this foundation. Uh, it's quite understandable that, uh, that if we'll just have internet and we'll not have the computers, we'll not have the education, what Tiet will talk about uh, as the next uh, person, it's, uh, everything of this uh, doesn't have any sense, but if we will just put together all these pictures with educational issues, with, uh, with computerizational issues, then it starts fly. Thank you. I've tried to be fast. Thank you very much. Uh, yes, exactly. <laughs> it was really uh, very informative and, and, and uh, fast presentation. I would like to ask the audience if there are any quick, immediate questions. I think we can follow the model and uh, up to three questions can pick up. No questions? Maybe we can, too fast. Maybe we can, we still have discussion after that. But I would like to have a question for myself in this case. What, what, what I was looking at and, and, and trying to understand that you, you've, uh, of course, painted quite successful developments in that area, and, and we know Estonia is good at that. But at the same time, it was quite complex because you mentioned government talking to businesses, then there was a list of ministries, Minister of Economy, Minister of in, in the Interior. So it's quite complex picture of actors involved in that. And uh, the question, of course, arises, how do you agree on that? Because it's, of course, if there are funds available, for example, from structural funds from EU, or there is some money available from the government, still the government has to decide that, okay, we will give the money to the private sector, you will complement with other funds, so pull together, and then we, we, we go ahead. But still the issue is, so who actually starts the talks? how you sort of define the so range of actors. What's, what's the process? I think that that would be probably of interest of the audience. Uh, uh, how this dialogue takes place, who starts it and who ends, and, and how finally the decision uh, is, uh, is taken. So some machinery of, of that. You know, there is, uh, there is no one single answer to your question. In each specific situation, uh, the separate uh, participants of the projects will start this, uh, this dialogue. I think the crucial question here is uh, to find out the construction where everybody is interested in the project. I think that's the most crucial point here. So in terms of, for example, this Estvin project that we have mentioned, uh, each of these ministries have their own interests there. So Ministry of Interior Affairs, for example, they have to deal with the regional development, for example. So Ministry of Economy have their own interests. It's quite understandable what kind of interests have each telecom company who is here. Well, uh, definitely there are some, uh, some obstacles in the process. Definitely there are uh, a little bit different interests in the process, but, uh, but each participant of the process have just to be quite open enough and uh, to be able to communicate, and then the project, uh, process will, will start to move on. Uh, one, two, three. Is there any task force? Is some kind of regular meetings which you have? Because you mentioned there is a consortium that yeah. uh, maybe something of, of those <laughs> small but important details. Yeah, uh, I mean, in case of, once more, in case of Estwin, there is a specific organization behind that. So there is an organization with, with some persons hired who is dealing only with that, and that's the, the only task what they have to manage the project, like a project management organization. But definitely, there is a council in this organization. The council consists from representative of each of these founders, and, uh, and these councils comes together, as far as I know, uh, one time per quarter, and decides the strategic issues. All other time, if the directions is set up, in that situation, the, uh, the project management team inside the organization is dealing with the issue. 
right. Thank you very much. If there are no any questions, I just give the, the floor to Erki to continue with the presentations. Thank you. Thank you. So, thank you. There is, of course, another theory why Nordic countries are so keen on telecom and internet. Uh, have you noticed the weather outside? It's getting worse. Uh, so, uh, I wish to introduce the next speaker. Uh, he has been working uh, uh, in telecom uh, for very many years. Uh, his current position is in EMT, so mobile operator. But today he's going to talk something else, not about this uh, mobile com, but that look at world. Please welcome the Tamiste. Uh, good morning. Uh, let's move from hardware, from infrastructure, a bit to the more soft issues. And I will talk to you a little bit about the look at work project, how it began and, and what we, we achieved. Uh, and again, mm, let's start from uh, history. Uh, it was a little bit more than 10 years ago when the leaders from two major banks, telecoms and uh, major Estonian uh, IT companies, all together, uh, 10 companies uh, coming together and, and discussed about the possibility to rise the, the internet penetration. And the, 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 the main difference of, of uh, other such discussions was that all of, of these, these companies, they were ready to invest. And all, all together, they were ready to invest more than 12 million euros. It's private money just to put to, to uh, a society and then to rise with the quality of, of society. Uh, then we, we, we started, we, we discussed that uh, we wanted to, to rise the quality of, of life of Estonian people to, to connecting them, them to the internet. It means that um, uh, to rise the availability of internet, to, to simplify the, the usage of that and then to modify them. And, and we, we think that the, to do it, uh, the, the, the rise of, of the quality in, 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 in their life, the mainly it, it's seen that the citizens of a very small country can act in, in the world like where we are coming from, from the big country. So no difference anymore. This was somehow our, our wish. Of course, uh, the project, or, or even it's, it's not a project, it's, uh, it's uh, we, we say it's its program which uh, consists of, of, of many of, of projects. We, we needed to set the internal goal to, to motivate the, the management of, of this. And uh, we, we said internally that let's catch the Finland in, in internet penetration. Finland as a headquarter of, of, of Nokia was, was the, the main competitor for us in, in this field and, and, and we, we, we saw it, it as, a, as, a, as a, let's say, a wonderland. In starting point uh, in 2001, uh, our internet penetration was 26% and the uh, Finns, they had uh, 54. I can say that in, in three years, as we, we planned the, the program, we, we catched this 54. But unfortunately, we didn't catch the Finland because they developed and then move move on. But uh, yes, we, now we are we are very close, and the, even even on that time, we we were quite close. The main topic which we, we discussed in the beginning was why we are participating on, on such a program. Is it just a charity philanthropy? Is it? something for the business and, and paying back very soon? Or is it some PR benefits? And there were long discussions uh, with, with, with uh, program members and, and also in, in, in the society. What is the, the driving force for this program? 
And uh, after the discussions, we, we decided that, yes, it's, it's for charity. On, on that time, it, it was not usual that the uh, private sector puts such a big money uh, for charity. But we believe that it, it gives back in, in the future with the uh, development of, of business climate and, and uh, with the development of, of efficiency of uh, society. Uh, what we did, we, we initiated uh, projects in, in three main domains. First was access, so our way of thinking was that uh, first of all we, we need to give the people access to the internet. And uh, from the first stage the decision was that we don't uh, try to, to, to change the, 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 the business uh, competition here, but we initiate the, the projects we, uh, we, we start the things, but we don't operate them, and, and we, we don't donate any, any, any business. So first is access, that they are able to, to connect to Internet. Next uh, needed thing is, is training. So it means that, that how to use, and the uh, main issue on, on that time, what we, we, we saw, is the, the first step. So. That, that people, they are just afraid to, to make the, the, the first click to, to help to them to do it. And then after that, this is coming with the motivation, so why I need to, to go to internet each day, each week, uh, very often. Starting from access, we decided to create a lot of, of public internet uh, points. There was, on that time, already some little bit less than 200 of them. We created additional 500 uh, public internet points. We put it in libraries, in schools, in local government houses, in some smaller villages, even in, in, in the, the shops, because there were the places where the people were getting together. And in, uh, to, to every this point, we donated the, the computers, we organized the, the connection, and we, we made the contract with a local operator of, of the, that point. And, and uh, we said that you need to operate it, and you need to help, not train, but, but just help the people who are, who are coming there. And it, it uh, works very well, and, and they are, some of them are still alive and, 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 and working. And of course, uh, we, we, we worked with, with government, with, with the broadband strategy and things like that as well, but I, I think this public access internet points, it, it was the, the, the main, main thing that we, we did to, to give access. So it, needs, it means that but not the, the personal access, but they are they will be able to, to come somewhere and, and, and access the internet. Next topic was, was the training. Uh, I don't know, did we we with some world record or Guinness record here? But uh, we trained 10% of uh, adult Estonian citizens. Idea was uh, to, to build up a, a series of, uh, of, of trainings. Uh, it's eight hour trainings, four hours for how to use the computer, and then four hours uh, to, to, to give this, this feeling of a first click or, or the, the essentials of, of uh, internet browsing. Mm, we invested uh, altogether three million euros, and uh, it, it means that uh, the training of, of one person was around uh, 30 euros. And uh, we trained all together 102,000 uh, people. For that, we, we created our own classes, 17 of them, which we, we donated after the project uh, to the schools. And we use other computer classes as much as we, we, we could found. And so it, it means that, that we had all together 200 points in, in Estonia where the training was, was provided. We have a methodology, we trained the trainers and, and, and we, we make the, all the, the marketing centrally. 
but all all the trainings were, were, were locally and and it was really during one and a half year we, we, we did did this project and I think this was the most uh, successful part of the of, of, uh, first stage of, of look at look at world and last but not least uh, domain was the motivation so our aim was was to find some killer apps uh, which bring the, the, the people internet uh, to the internet and which keep them there uh, first we think that it's a good idea to to, to make the governmental services or, or local government services uh, put them to the internet and, and think that, that people are coming to use it. But very soon we realized that, that most of these services are the services which people are using very rarely and then they are using them. Then they, they need the consulting about the, the why they are using it. So there was not very big motivation to bring them all to, to the internet. Uh, we, we made several think tanks and uh, two major projects we, we choose from that. One is eSchool and another was the library's internet access so you can find the, the, the book, particular book and book it uh, to you in, in, in the all libraries over Estonia. But eSchool was the, the most uh, successful killer app. It was the application which uh, connect uh, the school, it means teachers, the children and the parents uh, together. Uh, our aim first of all was uh, to get the collaboration between the uh, teachers and, and the parents. But what we, we, we got was that the children started to, to, to love this, this application. So it was so easy to go to home, to the internet, and uh, look what uh, lessons we, we need to do, or what's the, the next day's schedule, or whatever. And uh, even if the parents uh, were all, got all the information about the, 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 the bad habit or, 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 or bad numbers from school, even, even still the, the, the children loved. And very soon we, we, we got the, the 300,000 uh, users to that uh, system. Today this uh, e-school is, is privatized. It's a uh, separate company, private company, and, and running it, it, it for uh, most of, of, of Estonian schools. Uh, first stage of, of, of Look at World program was uh, indeed to, to be free maximum four years uh, long. But at, at the end of, of that, we decided that uh, this is really so good cooperation that we, we need to, to go on off of that. And at the end of, of 2005, we, we discussed about the, the, the cyber crimes, about the, the, the cyber security. And it decided that we, we need to do something here to, to rise up the knowledge of, of Estonian people about that and, and, and to rise up the usage of, of uh, secure ways of, of, uh, of, of getting to, to the applications in, in, in Internet. So the, the same, same, same companies, uh, the, the Look at World Foundation and plus uh, many additional companies, plus government on, on that time, we joined forces and, and we made the, the three years uh, computer security program. We teach uh, the people in mobile boxes, in, we even had the, the bus which tried from village to village and trained people and, and, and raised the awareness. And our aim was uh, to, to rise up the, the PKI users, the, the ID card and mobile ID card users penetration. And uh, we, we did it, it, it quite well. So you, you heard the, the penetration numbers today. Then we started, it was practically zero. There we, we started. And, and of course, uh, another thing what we, we started uh, was the, the web page, 
about uh, the, the computer security, how to, to secure the computer, what to do, how to fight the viruses, etc. And, and here our, our idea was that uh, in, in every village where was uh, such kind of, of uh, clever boy who, who is helping the uh, rest of people. And let's, let's teach this, this clever boy, let's, let's uh, give him the hints, give him the, the tools through internet. And in, in this case, the, the, the more and more computers are, are safe and, and, and clear, and it, it, it really works. Again, we started this today, it's, it's a private initiative, and, and, and they run this, this uh, web page still on, 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 on a private basis, and it it's, it's goes well. And again, then this project stopped. We think that still we have good companies, still we need to go on. It was year 2009, and we decided that uh, 300,000 Estonians are still not using the, the internet, and uh, we think that we, we, we need to, to deal with this digital gap. And our aim was, was to, to bring one third of them to the internet, so to, 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 to rise really, really the, the internet penetration to the, to the point where it it's lives by, them, by him himself. And come along, uh, we, we call this project, it's mainly by Estonian telecom companies and, and look at well foundation companies. We started in, in, in March, we uh, we, we donated a lot of uh, computers to the children, to the elder people, to the fa families who, who don't be able to, to, to buy it, it, it themselves. We, we created uh, such kind of, of uh, low price uh, connection types which we, we sold them. And uh, just now we are uh, in, 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 in at the finish of, of this project. Last Friday and that Saturday, myself, I, I, I spent also the, the time in, in, uh, to, to prepare the, the, the computers which, uh, to which we, we, we make the second life and donate it to the, to the, to the elder people. Uh, it was 200 computers which we, 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 we did last weekend. And now we, we see that we, we, we reach this 100,000 new internet users uh, goal. Let's see what will be the, the next, but I think that the, 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 there is so good spirit in, 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 in this foundation that probably we, we will find the next steps and, and will continue. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tiet, for this very interesting presentation. Uh, and uh, I must tell that uh, from the perspective of the Eve Governors Academy, of course, this particular course lecture uh, on, uh, on the look at world was really uh, very, very interesting for everyone. It was amazing that you know, people were discovering that such initiatives can exist and, and successfully exist. Uh, and um, no, I agree that it's very difficult to define what it is, uh, <laughs> whether it's business or it's, it's a charity, but I would probably define it as a kind of social enterprise in the interest of all. So any immediate questions uh, regarding this presentation? Um, thank you. That was really interesting. Uh, we face the, the, the same issues in Russia, but uh, the question is, uh, uh, there is a huge lack of literacy uh, if we're talking about people above 30 or 40 years using the computer, using the internet. But the major uh, issue is that, uh, except the lack of literacy, there is a uh, lack of amount of money to buy the computers. So I wonder if you have any, any, any programs uh, which is, are oriented for uh, the people above 40 to buy them, to make the computer more affordable for them, that they can buy it, because you, you learn them, you teach them how to use it, but uh, it is useless if they can't use it on the, on the daily basis, if they can't afford to buy the computer. They can't connect it to the, to the Internet, and uh, it means that uh, 
again, the, this training program will be useless. So do you have any experience in, in making uh, the PC uh, maybe with the plugged in the internet uh, more affo uh, affordable for, uh, for these people? Um, from the very beginning of, of a look at world program, we decided that we don't, uh, we, we will not donate the, the, the computer, so we, we will not pay uh, the, the connections for people. This was, was why we, we made these public uh, internet access points, because the elder people, they, they, they like to, to come together and, uh, and, and sit together and, uh, and that they, they have, they, they have a, a need for our uh, communication, so they, they came to, to this uh, public points and, and, and they, they used there very much. Also in the training, uh, they, they participated and, and after that they, they, they came to these public places. We, we measured also the result of, of, of a training and, and uh, more than 50% of, of people told after five months that, that they are still using the internet. Just to, 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 to give the low price computers, uh, we, we haven't experienced, but what we are doing uh, to, today with this come along project, we, we give, give a life to, to the, the, the second life to the computers. So the computers which have been three years in, in the company, in the bank, in the telecom company, so we, we just clean them, put the, the clean software to that, and, and we will donate it to uh, And this is mostly the elder people which, which uh, get these. Thank you. Any, any more questions? OK. Uh, Thanks for the presentation. Uh, this was very interesting, especially in terms of uh, education. Uh, can you please clarify uh, regarding um, uh, uh, connectivity of e-school? Do Estonian schools use mobile broadband or fabric for uh, getting access of pupils, of kids to services, or both? And what about such mobile standards as LTE? Because there are huge talks, for example, in Ukraine, and I'm representing Cisco Systems uh, working in Ukraine, yeah? huge talks about switching every single public sector school to uh, uh, mobile access rather than fabric to school, rather than using fabric technologies for that. What experience do you have in that in Estonia? How uh, do you do it? First of all, the, the e-school application is, is internet application and, and the aim of that was, was not to, to, to use it in, in the school. It's, it's only for the teachers to, to use it in the school. Most of, of Estonian schools, we, we have a, a, a ADSL type of, of, of internet connection and a uh, and lot of them are, are using the, the internet in, in the process of, of teaching uh, as well. But our main aim was, was that the, the children and parents in, in their homes start to, to, to use this application as well. Of course, the, the, the mobile broadband gives us, us the, the new possibilities here. And uh, for example, I, I, I know that uh, there is first school in, in, in Tallinn which bought one class of, of uh, iPads, put it into class and then use it in, in, in the teaching process. And, and such kind of things they are in, in the very beginning at the moment. And I think it's, it's not uh, about the, the, the technology of, of ac uh, access or technology of our connection. It's more or less uh, about the, 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 the habit and, and, and more or less uh, about the methodology, how to use it and why to use it. This is the most, most important. Thank you. Yeah, I think that that's... Oh, that's the key issue. That's not about technology. And again, I just want to bring the audience attention to the slides that you can li see a list of long list of agencies and actors involved in all that. So it's it's really about cooperation. Uh, any last question? Yeah. Uh, yeah, Montenegro, Milan Maric. Uh, one question arises when you are talking about a lot of people uh, completely out of internet usage. Uh, did you think about the uh, uh, possibility that some people remain still out of this usage uh, simply because of the reason they don't like internet and they will not use at all? Uh, do you think about possibility to support them with some kind of uh, 
uh, support at public places or at some uh, um, agencies or shelters or whatever, uh, that someone will do the service instead of them in person. It's already ongoing. For example, Estonian Post, we, we, we have a, a service where we, you, you can send the email and, uh, and then the, 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 it, it reaches as, as a regular mail or, or, or vice versa and, and such a services. I think this, this will be the, the private services. And it's definitely so that we, we never reach 100% of internet penetration here. It's uh, security reasons, uh, it's, it's what, whatever, so we are, we are sure of that. But I, I think it, it will be the, 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 the private services which, which gives such a thing. So, let's say thank you. So, I'm going to introduce the next speaker. Uh, he's the grand old man of Estonian identity documents. <laughs> uh, I work together with him and he has been really involved in all identity document projects in Estonia. So, uh, today I'm going to hear more about uh, ID cards and uh, uh, digital identity. So, please welcome Yuri Vore. Thank you. I will speak about mostly about 10 years experience that we learned about. Uh, as an international uh, community here speakers uh, in 15 minutes to summarize the experience of 10 years, it's, it's mission impossible near. So I'll uh, put mainly on the human part of and overall description of motivation if it's success. As uh, uh, reading international reports about uh, Estonian Air Society, still s this is something unprecedented that we succeeded. And ID card project uh, is also part of it, so I will a little bit talk about what, what's, what's the role of the electronic identity and how it it is all binded together. Uh, the first ideas uh, about having the uh, electronic ID card project uh, were in '97. The first uh, uh, in Malaysia, the government had started to uh, try the public infrastructure, uh, use it uh, uh, on, on the electronic documents. And uh, as a four-comma uh, uh, Finnish government, as a first government in Europe, introduced ID cards uh, with the uh, electronic chip with PKI-enabled uh, certification system. But it was a voluntary scheme. So, as always, uh, uh, we are living in a, in a society where law pays a lot of uh, importance in making things happen. Uh, it's so that uh, uh, legal system is somehow based on the uh, pa paper-based thinking. Starting from clay tablets and papyrus is uh, the uh, meaning of, of uh, signature, be it a personal mark, a stamp, uh, a seal, is always behind the legally binding documents. It always, uh, the uh, document, if it's formulated, had the, uh, certain mandatory components. If it's an agreement, then the signers or parties should be identified by the name, by the status, whatever. Uh, secondly, uh, typically, uh, a legal transaction is uh, time critical. So one mandatory uh, component is also time and place. And third one, as an expression of will, is typically uh, confirmed by the signature of the parties. So uh, the uh, task uh, in, in the 
these services will at least to emulate to simulate the same functionalities in the digital world. If you sign even uh, um, in presence of public notarius uh, 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 legally binding uh, contract, it's easy. In internet, there need to be kind of third trusted party who will confirm using technology and also the confirmation from the state authorities uh, the uh, identity uh, parameters of, of the transaction parts. So, uh, Digital Signature Act uh, introduced in uh, in 2000 gave the like a framework uh, how it's done. Also, uh, law and uh, personal identification documents entered the new document type uh, ID with the digital data included in the personal documents. So the uh, plan uh, government accepted uh, the uh, launching in 2000 and even from the very beginning uh, uh, looking at the experience of other countries uh, there was a so-called total plan. It means by the law the uh, identity card was made mandatory and primary identification document. It's like a, a passport uh, uh, without the visa pages. Uh, uh, and uh, basic uh, agreement between the uh, public institutions and, and private companies already mentioned <laughs> telecom and banking sector was that it will be definitely the same uh, infrastructural uh, usage of, of, of the ID card. From one part, uh, the government will, win, will introduce and tender the uh, electronic identity carrier and take care of this. Uh, the needed uh, certification services will be contracted uh, from the private sectors. So as mentioned, uh, uh, Telecom companies and the banks uh, established the certification center and uh, the, the services were 100% uh, outsourced. Mm. The documents themselves also were contracted uh, abroad. Uh, the international trend uh, was won by uh, Swiss company Troop, who established here the daughter company for, for the personalization. So already uh, several tender rounds had been and, and Troop uh, daughter company had served us uh, well. And uh, so it was that in a very short time, in 2002, in January, the first ID cards were issued and we reached, as you see, the uh, number of uh, one million in, in, in a little bit more than four years. Uh, for be precise, uh, uh, nowadays uh, uh, numbers are as follows. If I remember correctly, there are 1.1 uh, million uh, active, uh, electronically active ID cards on use and for at least one time during the lifetime of the cards 450,000 people had used the, uh, the card electronically and the heavy users uh, uh, percentage is about 20-25% uh, so it's uh, huge success for comparison, the same type of the mandatory electronic ID card scheme in Belgium was about 7 million of population. They have reached the uh, usage of 14%. And uh, our statistics show that every week there's at least 1,000 new users. So, what's the card? It's a hardware piece. Uh, to say it's uh, dual use uh, from one side is a, 
uh, identity document, visually or biographic data is according to the uh, IKEA uh, travel card standard, uh, uh, personalized visually on the card from both sides and it, for ease of use, it's machine, so-called machine readable uh, document. It means optically your, your, your identity is checked very easily and, and the airports, border crossings. And I said uh, it's a state issued uh, ID and travel documents uh, inside of the uh, Schengen Agreement TU. It's, it's uh, the uh, legally recognized ID document. Its maximum validity is for five years and it's mandatory by the law uh, to all residents, uh, citizen residents of Estonia starting from age of 15 and those alien residents who have the uh, residence permit for Estonia will receive the document from the very beginning uh, of, of the residence. It contains, as said, uh, uh, a chip uh, with the private keys of the person securely stored inside of the chip and two certificates, uh, one for authentication and second one for uh, uh, digitally signing the documents. Uh, during the times from the very beginning uh, uh, as ID card and its electronic part, it's, uh, uh, hardware which need from one side uh, drivers, uh, user uh, software, utilities, whatever, installations uh, to make it work, to connect the card reader. So uh, website id.de is like a single source for, for getting the knowledge. It uh, provides uh, uh, information and the access to the helpline, as you see, there is a 24-7 serving telephone uh, number uh, which, which, uh, which, which is in assistance. Mm. And what's the point? What the stone is different? Typically, uh, ID card uh, is considered to be the token for authentication. It means if there's a web shop or bank or whatever, it's the first to access and authenticate and get the personal services, you need to be authenticated. It means uh, some cryptographic transaction uh, uh, will, will connect to, your, uh, to a personalized service. But uh, le legal wise it's very hard to uh, put uh, the, the card users on the situation that the service provider will define by flashing the uh, web browser pages what will be the legal result of this interconnection let's uh, talk about it uh, in Estonia, we have put uh, the focus on the meaning of, of the expression of the will and the ability to sign something. So, uh, as this infrastructural part, it means uh, telecommunication, fixed line computers, whatever, the token ID card, and then the uh, knowledge and the ability to be free in your decisions. So, uh, mm, in the legal system, government took the unprecedented uh, courage and announced that after the uh, system is built up and services will start uh, to be used, uh, every uh, state institution and municipal also is obliged to accept the digitally signed communication documents on the same uh, level as personally signed uh, paper-based documents. And uh, there was an aim to create a digital signature uh, architecture which is uni universal. It means it's not like uh, 
a separate island to a service uh, uh, limited uh, thing, uh, but it's uh, for the open usage in any relation uh, and uh, for what most uh, uh, important, uh, from the very beginning it was based that the created uh, software solution will be distributed free of charge based on the, on the open source code uh, principle. And uh, uh, so we moved uh, from the very beginning. So jointly, uh, there were no adequate software uh, uh, solutions available. Uh, government and private partners uh, created uh, Digidoc uh, infrastructure. It means, uh, see the, the uh, green bars, it basically the uh, software uh, code and documentation which uh, is distributed free of charge. Uh, it contains uh, uh, the standardized document formats, program libraries, there is a uh, services, it's a client software for download uh, to sign the documents and also it's up the uh, Digitoc signature portal for, for the users. Also for the uh, corporate usage there is a, a special web service which a, a, a enables uh, the digital signature. Uh, it's based on the international standards and uh, uh, as a a feature in the public infrastructure world, it's always important to have the uh, personal certificate uh, uh, validity uh, checked as person can in, 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 in a second uh, just uh, denull his, his rights and fake or whatever, it's a security question. So we have uh, in Estonia 24-7 up the uh, online in-time certification service uh, uh, protocol which confirms by signing authentication that yes, this person's electronic uh, identity is valid in the uh, moment the transaction is made or, or a document is signed. And uh, this maybe a technically complicated feature that you can't give the uh, legally valid uh, signature without having the internet connection to have the uh, CA confirmation that yes, this is a, a legally valid transaction. It still uh, adds the possibility that uh, this document is, is long term, has a long term uh, validity, both legally and the possibility to to uh, archive it, and and it doesn't change in the time. And already you've spoken that uh, there's a typically the services are accessed uh, uh, with the use of the web browser, and there's a several options. Uh, starting from very lowest, uh, it means uh, for public services uh, there's an agreement that uh, uh, internet web bank users in Estonia can log into the e-government services also using the authentication of, of the uh, web banks, be it uh, with the use of the score or code cards or then the pin calculators. Uh, this is the lowest security level option. Second one are already, as you see, already ID card and starting from 2007 the uh, mobile ID uh, option. And then uh, here is a picture of the citizens portal but uh, most of the separate services are also having the same type of the login window. Uh, it's also uh, a certification center, uh, free software modules uh, which are very easily and uniformly uh, integrated to, to the service provider web pages. 
And now what we learned. Uh, uh, easiest answer what we learned uh, is uh, that everything is connected and everything is important. And it's really so. The first uh, uh, positive uh, advice and answer, if there's the option that your electronic identity card is uh, voluntary and mandatory, do the trick as we did make it mandatory. It's a positive law enforcement that it works. Finnish experience shows that uh, this uh, uh, the population of about 5 million and already, I think, 12 years of experience, they have issued in total uh, 250,000 cards. The number of the, uh, of the services is uncomparably lower than in Estonia. So at least we suggest make it somehow, we call it positive enforcement, make it mandatory, but don't put the heavy sanctions if they immediately will not uh, take the card. Anyway, it's a question of trust. PKA is a trust scheme and enforcement in very rude mode uh, doesn't help you in usage. This is actually the, the goal to achieve the knowledge, usage, common uh, understanding that uh, there is a transparent and secure mode of, of doing uh, business uh, in the internet. Also the question, what, what comes first, infrastructure or services? At the same time actually. Nobody in the private business will not put up uh, the service just for fun without knowing what will be the uh, break-even or, or uh, feasibility phase. It means it all takes time and does the synergy in sharing the expenditure uh, with the uh, public sector. It means state should do, how to say, the entry and guarantee the secure token for the electronic commerce also. Uh, it was been talked about the, the motivation. This uh, as important as for the service providers, for the users, is that the services which are accessed with the ID card is are balanced. It means if, if the entry to the service just for getting the information and it needs for unnecessary authentication or, or even signing something, uh, that this uh, bird will not fly. Mm. Also, it's spoken here in Estonia in an uh, unprecedented way, uh, the uh, service contract in, pro uh, in producing uh, the national ID is outsourced to the foreign uh, company. Also, state doesn't have its own state-owned uh, uh, top or root CA, but it controls via the contracts and, uh, and, and the uh, supervision of the infrastructure. Put all the uh, technology risk into the companies and do what the state is needed to do, provide the decent, good and cheap service. Uh, technology is not the question, risks are not lying there, it's, it's still on, on, on the people. If, if the users will um, engrave the pin codes to the card or, uh, or, or will just lose it, then you can't do a thing. Uh, there's never too much of the uh, training uh, awareness uh, and uh, what, whatever is as look at the world have done, it's an unending road of, of having new technology, new knowledge. And also a proper uh, procurement measures, political uh, consensus and business interest should be, uh, how to say, binded through the 
learning by doing uh, principle. If some things hadn't worked, we had uh, negotiated private companies and the government and procured the new needed uh, upgrades. It's uh, the same, it's uh, written down here uh, that what, what's important. Uh, and please bear in mind that uh, the top of the top still it's the privacy and security of the users. PKI system, unfortunately, is either technology where the trust, which one time is broken, the system is collapsed. Uh, bear in the mind that uh, uh, you maintain the maximum highest level of security in your services and avoid so call project fatigue. If you uh, see the problem, grab it, try to solve it. Don't be so-called home blind uh, that uh, uh, service is running, that uh, <laughs> everything is okay. Listen what your citizens and the users will need for. And as said, well, this running mobile is now and what, whatever the future is, we will meet it. At least uh, the tragedy would be if uh, the uh, electricity goes on. I don't know how we once again will start to uh, re-establish our public services. Thank you for your time. And the information in English also can be found on those links. Thank you. Thank you, Yuri. It's definitely very, uh, very deep uh, subject and it's difficult to cover it in, in minutes. Now I must excuse, we're running over time. Uh, so uh, if it's okay with you, we can continue. I guess we're not thrown out. But uh, it's almost one and we have still one presentation. So how is it? We'll continue. Okay. Then uh, we have a couple of questions that we can take probably. You had a question? Uh, thank you. I think it is very impressive. Uh, the, my question is about the database uh, of uh, citizens. Uh, we just talk about the uh, ID. Uh, from your uh, the Estonian information system, you have uh, the many uh, e-services. So from my bank point of view, telecom point of view, health sector point of view, education point of view, they all need to access citizens' database. So how do you uh, maintain this database and consolidate into this uh, ID card? Thank you. Oh, uh, <laughs> I've been delegated. Uh, so uh, it's uh, actually rather simple. Uh, we have two different databases. One is for so-called uh, family matters, where we register a child when uh, they're born or uh, all births and deaths and, and uh, marriages and etc. But we have a different uh, separate database where we manage legal identities. It means that when a person is issued a document, uh, uh, his or her uh, identity is verified. Uh, so he's identified against all other persons uh, in Estonia. And then it's entered in that uh, registry and uh, all the major players who actually need to identify persons uh, uh, have uh, accessed, access to that registry. It's uh, done through uh, X-Road, uh, so we have so-called identifi identification service uh, built on that. So all the banks, uh, police, everybody who needs to identify a person uh, online immediately has access to this identity database. It's, it's a kind of service. But of course it's not a public service in the way that uh, not everybody can access it. It's uh, based on uh, mutual contracts. So who maintains those databases? Police. Прошу прощения, вот при составлении ID-карты используется очень много информации личного характера, 
пользователя. Как в Эстонии преодолевался опыт, так как общество разделено на средний класс, богатый класс и с уровнем положения в обществе индивидуума, то есть пользователя? Были ли препоны и вообще барьер психологический был при получении данных IT-карт? I personally don't uh, remember any such cases. So everybody was accepting ID card quite okay. So there were no objections, uh, no such uh, uh, big discussions around it. Of course, there are always some security freaks and then people who are trying to argue uh, if it's uh, safe or, uh, or correct. But uh, uh, public acceptance is very good. So, uh, we have to continue because running, uh, time is running really late. So, I would like to introduce the next speaker. Uh, she has been uh, working uh, in public sector and, uh, how to call it, private sector. Uh, it's a complicated um, uh, status. And uh, she has been working on registry of securities and private pensions for several, several years, building up uh, uh, a good public service uh, and has a very uh, thorough experience uh, how to build a good service and how these sh things were thought at first and how they turned out. So please welcome Kai Rusalep. Thank you. Um, and now uh I would like to welcome uh, you all to the country of registers because uh, in Estonia almost everything and everybody is registered in some of the registers, starting from cars, businesses, securities, ending with do dogs and cats and the soil. Uh, but to answer uh, to the last uh, question, the ID card is just a gate to the databases. It does not contain personal data. You, you enter the ID card and then you can access different databases and different registers. So the ID card is just a little piece of a document with the personal identity. The name, the um, social security number, and then some of the uh, ID information, which is only known to the person, like, like the PIN codes and, and something else. Um, where should I show? Yes. Um, I understand I have to be very fast, so I try to be very fast. Brief. <laughs> Brief, yes. Um, Last week, I spent with my family and friends in the middle of Finland, in the forest. Um, we did some fishing, we, we grabbed mushrooms, we, we had an excellent time. But we had no internet, no internet at all, for the whole week. And then we had a discussion with our friends that actually majority of the life in Estonia is online. You want to declare the taxes, you do it online. The meaning going to the bank has totally different meaning in Estonia. It means you log in and you're there. You, you register the name to your child online, your friends are online, everything is online. Which means that the Estonians actually are very keen on using e-services online. And if we had known this 15 years ago, probably we would have done something differently. We would have not focused on the databases, but we would have focused more on the e-services. I will not um, dig into the different registers and different databases, but I will provide you the lessons learned. Um, in 1996, when I started to work in the State Information Systems Department, uh, we had really perfect timing to build up uh, e-government. Because we had the newcomers advantage or the latecomers advantage, 
We had very good neighbors to learn from, Finland, Sweden. We went there, uh, we saw what they have done already, what was the goal for Estonia, and we had the lessons learned from their experience. So we could avoid the mistakes and build what we actually wanted to have. And we didn't have the legacy hardware or platform restrictions. Because in mid-90s, uh, it's the new age of new hardware started. You remember the IBM uh, 383, 483, the, the, the new and fast servers? So we didn't have the old uh, technical platform, but we could build new fast databases and we could start uh, collecting as much data as we wanted because no restrictions from the hardware. Then what we were struggling then, and, and um, still a bit struggling now, is the paper-based mindset. We came from the paper-based world. And um, people had few ideas about the possibilities of technology. I remember when the first version of the electronic um, land register came out. You know, the land register in old times, there was a book, a huge book. People uh, or, or the um, people in the court, working in the court, were writing this land number, this uh, coordinates, this belongs to this person. And when someone else buys this piece of land, the old data was trunking through with the red line. And when the lawyers got the new version, electronic land cadaster, they were very disappointed because they couldn't see the book on the screen. They couldn't turn the pages, strike through the old data with red line. So it's, it's the paper-based mindset. And, and with the ID card, I remember that the ID card has been in usage for two years already. And then there was an interview with the First Lady of Estonia. And, and um, the journalist asked, do you use ID card? She said, yes, you know, it's very convenient to clean the windscreen of the car in winter time. So, and, 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 and in this, with this mindset, we were struggling when we were building up the databases, the registers, electronic registers. And of course, because the business people and lawyers, they had no idea about the possibilities of technology, the IT determined the solution. And an IT people, they were the people. Uh, because of very fast development all around the country, the center could only react. And we were very few of us in the State Information Systems Department, only five people. And each of ministries had very good relationship with the same ministries in Finland, in Germany, in, in Sweden. They built up their own registers, their own databases, using their own standards at that time. And, and in the center, we could only see very fast development and we could only react. Um, and at that time, state budget was what we had because the center, the state information system department decided where to invest the IT money, where to give it. And, and it was one very powerful tool to uh, determine the development of state information systems. And legal framework was um, about how to establish registers, the establishment procedures of registers and data collection, not on e-services. We wanted to build up a databases with the quality, uh, very high quality of data. In 2000, uh, where we reached to was that there was many, many registers around, many, many registers. But people um, could 
um, use the services by using the web pages of different registers, which means that you have to be very smart citizen to know which register keeps which data and which services you get from which registers. Then a dream in the year 2002 that there's one access point to all registers. It, it was a powerful dream, and we, we have the website, esti.de, in English it's estonia.de. And, and we have the technical platform, and here you can see it's, it's Internet X, X route. It's not only for people to get the services, e-government services, but it's uh, also for the registers to start cross-usage the data so that the data about the persons is in population register and the data about the businesses is in commercial registers. And if they want to get either of each other's data, they won't ask it from the company or from the person, but they ask it from each other. So um, in next session, you will hear much more about the X road. But where we ended in 2011, is, is the picture in here? And, and do you think, um, what do you think, what is the most difficult thing to change? A habit. If people are used to use services from the different web pages of different registers, it's very difficult to get them starting the usage services from the center. There's two possibilities. One is to force everybody to go to the center, which is unacceptable in Estonia. Another one is to make this center so much better, so much convenient, providing you so much more possibilities than going separately to each register. And we're on the half of this way. And lessons learned, learned, you should and one should focus on e-services, not on data collection. When we established a database or, or register of the registers, which aim was to keep the data, of, uh, not the data of the uh, registers, but, but the metadata of the registers, which registers are in Estonia then uh, the registrar decided to ask the data, the technical uh, data about the uh, server, the um, uh, programming language or the software language of this database, etc., etc. But this is not what people needed. People needed to know which registers, what data, what services, uh, how do I uh, access there. So it's, it's a different setup, mind setup. Architecture should be made by business people, not by IT. IT people are too rational, and the life is not rational. The, the, imagine um, architects building uh, or drawing a houses, buildings, uh, with the help and, and in, in immediate consultancy with the builders. Then the Sydney Opera House probably we ha would have never been built. So it's, it's the business mindset which says that the, the register should be built up this way. And of course, these people have to consult each other because otherwise the solution would be too expensive. But, but not the IT should say that. We will do this register this way. It's too rational. Um, and, and guidance for the service providers and end users from the center. That's what they need. If they go to the offices of state institutions, the first thing they ask, they ask for help. It's exactly what they need from the internet. They need the guidance. And, and the, the last lesson learned is that one institution should have the helicopter view on e-services, e-government. Because each institution will uh, do their role, will fulfill their duties, will build up their own little e-government. But someone should have a helicopter view and power to guide this implementation. Thank you very much.
Thank you. It was a very good insight uh, because I've been working in the government uh, several years and exactly things tend to go that way, unfortunately. Uh, any questions? Thank you very much. My question is on your last slide. Um, have you developed a standard um, guidelines for electronic services to help registers to build and define their online service in a convenient way to the users? And the second question is, um, in this helicopter view, um, which entity in Estonia now have this view? And uh, what is the relationship between this institution and the rest of uh, government agencies? Uh, still, um, I will answer the second part of the questions. There is still state information systems department under the Ministry of uh, um, Economy and uh, Communications. And you will hear the head of this department, Margus Pyja, talking in the next session after the lunch about the X-Road. Um, and, and this uh, institution still has some power on implementing on the helicopter view, but probably it's too weak. It, 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 it should have more. It, it depends on what, what you want. But, but uh, looking at the e-government, there should be a stronger view. But uh, this uh, guidance, it's the very simple thing that when a citizen enters to website, first the website should be very easy to navigate, very easy to understand. But he or she wants to know how to submit an application, how should I fill in data, what services do I get? If I uh, order, um, I don't know, if, if I tr want to register the building license of uh, the license of the building of my house, then when do I get the response? What's next? It's the typical questions people ask from the desk, and these questions they want to be answered online, but probably some technical assistance as well. Press the button. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> My name is Al Jansen from Norway. Thank you for a very interesting presentation. My question is about legacy, legacy systems. That's uh, maybe one of the great problems in developing e-government services, to have a number of old systems based on old, old standards, old data formats. Oh, how did you manage to solve these problems? I think... Um we didn't have very old systems, um, very old. That was one of our advantage. We didn't have very old. When, when I'm working in the, um, in the stock exchange, uh, and we had discussion with the colleagues in Denmark. They asked, what about the paper-based securities? I asked, what about the paper-based securities? You mean the paper-based securities? You know, some online, some in the, uh, in the databases, and some paper-based. We have no paper-based securities in Estonia. Be be and we don't have this uh, question. And, and um, all the databases are built in, in, uh, in new software, in new standards, in new systems, in it's, it's very difficult to describe, but we don't have this problem. But I would put it that way, that there are different, different systems, and the answer is that. It's X-Road. Yes. That's the way how to interconnect. So everybody has to connect just to one standard, not everybody with everybody. Yes, yes. So, one more question. And then, of course, uh, if there are any questions that somebody kind of thought uh, I couldn't ask uh, in the time. All the speakers are still here, so we can shoot one or two, and then it's probably time for, for having dinner. Right. Lunch, OK, sorry, <laughs> lunch. <laughs> sure. It hasn't been so long session. <laughs> Thank you very much for the presentation. Extreme long. Uh, during your presentation, you mentioned that there were two options to make the, the, the Estonia.ee website popular and attractive enough and then fully used by the citizens. One is mandatory, the second is make the center website better than the others. 
So do I am I understand correctly that the currently there's a central website, but there's still uh, some website by different ministries and agencies. Yes. So you have a dual system going on, but the information you get is identical. Um, is there any plan to, to merge completely, or do you want to leave as it is and then let the natural force settle the course? Um, the different websites will uh, stay anyway, because the um, duty of the ministries is not only to keep the register, but tr to provide many, many other services. But the idea big, big of the center, central point of the website, it, it's because that it's much easier for the citizen to go to one website to remember the uh, name of the website to URL of the website and to get um, all services from there. Uh, this e-services center website should be for the e-services which people can, um, or, or it should be the access to the registers to the state registers. But the website for the ministers, they can show you the way to the registers, but the aim of the ministry's website is to provide the information about the duties and tasks of the minister. It's, it should be the different meaning of those two different websites. And uh, what I see, the only thing we could do is to make the central website better and better and better. And, and probably to do some, um, some marketing for this website, which hasn't been done. So, uh, we're running late. Uh, is there anybody, everybody's thinking about food, I guess. Uh, <laughs> um, then I would uh, really thank uh, all the speakers and please give them a big round of applause.